Uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Ajay Kumar and I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Neo Ipo Incorporation, a USA based company. And uh, what we do is uh, we facilitate global trade uh, by um, helping our customers to execute uh, both domestic and international uh, B2B transactions. Uh, we do that um, primarily through our uh, flagship product, which is a multinational multi language uh, search engine for um, uh, doing with B2B transactions. And uh, we also provide uh, software tools uh, for uh, B2B transactions and uh, also act as an uh, agent for our customers. The topic of my presentation today is uh, uh, opportunities, challenges, and uh, mistakes and solutions um, in uh, international trade um, relevant to uh, small businesses. Uh, before we uh, delve into, the to into that topic uh, in detail further, uh, I want to first give you an overview of the current um, macroeconomic situation, which is mostly about the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And the COVID-19 pandemic had a disastrous consequence on um, the global GDP. And to give um, a perspective of it, the global GDP dropped by about 4.5% um, uh, in 2020. Uh, which is approximately equal to 4 trillion US dollars, which is a huge amount. But the good news is that um, the vaccines, most of them are working, so we can expect a lot of positive news from the health point of view of different populations of the country, or uh, of the United States and also the rest of the countries. Correlating to that, based on historical data um, of similar events like uh, the in a Spanish flu epidemic, uh, we can expect uh, a high economic growth rate after the COVID-19 pan pandemic ends. But when this high economic growth environment uh, kicks in, we can also expect a huge inflation. The reason for that is the central banks of most countries especially the top three countries, um, uh, regions, uh, it, it, um, includes um, the Federal Reserve of the United States, the Bank of Japan, and the European Central Bank. They have pumped a huge amount of money into their respective economies. Similarly, the governments of many countries, and especially that of the G20 countries, have pumped in huge amount of money through fiscal stimulus packages. Therefore, there is a lot of liquidity in the system, which is all fine if the economy, I'm talking about the real economy, is down as opposed to the stock, um, the stock market. But when the real economy is doing well and there is liquidity, too much of liquidity in the system, then there will be a lot of inflation. When this happens, the central um, banks, especially the major central banks, what they will do is they use the tools within the power uh, to reduce inflation. For example, they will raise the interest rates. But if the change in the economic environment, because of uh, the rapid change in monetary um, policy happens, then we can expect an economic downturn it is beyond our control. Uh, we as business leaders, what we should do is plan for this uh, economic up and down economic cycle. All this is going to play out for sure uh, in the near to short term time frame. But in the long term time frame, three broad um, phenomena that are occurring and uh, those are going to have a, an effect on our businesses. The first one is is a globalization. We can read in our newspapers, local and international newspapers, uh, how the geopolitics is already playing out because of the globalization. And this uh, will have a huge uh, change in the job opportunities, economic opportunities and the, the business models validity. The second is climate change. A situation like the pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, had a bad mm, a negative effect on the uh, global economy. Now, imagine that getting, getting amplified many, many times with, um, uh, with a phenomena like climate change. 
Therefore, we as business leaders need to plan for that because there will be a lot of regulation that will be introduced because um, in order to deal with the climate change. This provides us, uh, provides us both challenges as well as business opportunities. And the third is the AI revolution. The AI revolution currently is being played out within the companies of um, United States and China. Although it is in the nascent stages, in a few years from now, it is going to be the dominant force. For example, the prices will drop drastically. Therefore, we as business leaders should focus on this phenomena and plan accordingly. So overall, there is a huge risk and as well as um, opportunities because of the short-term economic cycle and as well as the broad um, long-term um, phenomena that are occurring. So one of the best ways to counter these um, economic cycles is to uh, position your business for um, economic growth internationally. So uh, this in turn um, brings in a lot of challenges because our company is focused on um, international trade. I am going to give you um, a, um, a perspective about um, these challenges through um, by going into 10 broad principles uh, that um, a company will face as they uh, do business research and also uh, um, they start out with doing business research and um, uh, finally um, end up doing a transaction. These are all the challenges that a small business will face. Um, but this uh, uh, small business faces and which is just getting started or a company which is already doing uh, international trade. Uh, will also face. The reason um, an existing company will also face is because the dynamic nature of uh, the uh, macro environment that we are going to be in, in the near future and also in the long term. Therefore, it is very imperative that uh, you, we have a pulse in the market. Um, uh, having given that background, let us get started with the 10 broad principles um, uh, of um, uh, doing uh, international trade. I am going to explain them from the point of view of um, a small business uh, doing um, import and export transactions for physical products but the broad principles will be applicable to even companies that are providing services cross-border and also software selling software services cross-border so let's get started the first and uh, foremost um, important point uh, in international trade is to figure out where exactly is the market opportunity for your set of products? Uh, I'm going to illustrate that uh, using this graph. Uh, the x-axis corresponds to the country's position in export or import, while the y-axis corresponds to the cumulative uh, market percentage um, that is available below that point, including that point. So, for example, if you take this uh, second set of points, this is the first set of points, in the second set of points, uh, which is approximately around 83 to 84 uh, percent, it means that the including this point, there is 83 to 84 percent available uh, market share available. So, uh, the further we can notice that the first around six points, that is the first six countries in here, occupy around 50% of the market share, while all the rest of the countries occupy uh, the remaining 50% of the market share. Uh, and therefore, uh, what um, businesses do usually is uh, they um, consider these top six countries or so that occupy uh, the top 50% of the market share and focus on them for marketing efforts. Uh, such an effort um, is uh, probably good for big businesses, but it is uh, probably not a good strategy for small businesses. And the reason for that is uh, the uh, getting businesses from from this these countries that have a huge market share is extremely competitive. Instead, uh, what is uh, suggested is to focus all your um, marketing and uh, business development in those countries that have a a smaller market share and this is a key point that you have to gain out of this uh, presentation further um, let's say um, you want to capture half a percentage 
uh, market share of the total market size okay the total total market size in this case is about 46 billion dollars so even if you capture half a market share uh, uh, half a percent market share then that comes to around um, approximately around a quarter of a million dollars which is a huge um, um, amount of money for small business but capturing that half a percent market share in this top segment of the market is extremely competitive and intense research um, and intense uh, uh, um, and you need to allocate a lot of resources for it but in uh, capturing half a mark, uh, percent market share in this area is far less more um, competitive so this is a uh, need to be kept in mind as you uh, do our um, your business development and I'm going to elaborate on these points in the next uh, few slides so coming back uh, to those um, as pointed out right now uh, in a few seconds back the the market opportunity are distributed in across multiple uh, segments so the and then further within uh, each country the market opportunity um, for small businesses uh, is to target customers uh, who are relatively small uh, who are relatively small businesses and not target big businesses this is a key insight you should keep in mind and then further uh, in order to capture a, a good percentage of the market you need to aggregate multiple uh, orders from um, uh, multiple countries and many small businesses in order to grow your business further you really uh, need um, automation uh, to do all of this and because uh, the the chance of a set of leads uh, converting to uh, leads in the sense that uh, they are business inquiries uh, for price quotations or um, uh, questions regarding a product converting those set of leads to actual transaction is about 0.5 percent so that's pretty low so you need online marketing uh, in order to um, promote your products internationally uh, keeping this demand and um, uh, of our customers in mind, New Epo Incorporation um, uh, hosts um, digital um, business profiles of our customers for free if, uh, in about 70 countries. The image shown here is uh, the business profile of, of, one of, our, of one of our customers. So the next um, point uh, in a uh, barrier in international marketing is uh, multiple languages problem. Uh, as mentioned earlier, um, the the market opportunity is distributed in multiple countries. No one can speak so many languages. Okay, and um, uh, so what happens is um, most probably the the sellers what they do is they uh, create the marketing material and also the website either in the native uh, tongue or uh, at best in English, hoping that English is understood by uh, most of the uh, buyers. Uh, but on the contrary, most uh, buyers um, think and search online in their native tongue when they want to buy. Therefore, it is imperative that you uh, create marketing material and um, and promote your products in um, uh, multiple languages. But no one knows so many languages, and that is the reason why our, um, a company like ours, Neo Epon Corporation, offers marketing services in 40 plus languages. Um, uh, for about 70 countries so all you need to do is create business uh, profile in one language and we will convert it into multiple languages so these are all the uh, the image shows all the sets of um, uh, languages and countries where we offer our services next um, the most important point uh, once you understand uh, the concept of where your um, uh, market opportunity is is to allocate uh, some budget um, uh, to promote your um, uh, products okay so this um, non allocation of um, uh, marketing budget by small businesses is um, is very um, uh, expensive mistake and um, the reason is even if your uh, products are superior uh, your potential customers will not be aware of your uh, products so your competitors will win out or you lose business so instead of um, reducing the budget or not allocating the budget at all, the key 
is to allocate your limited budget to the exact um, countries to target the and within that countries target the exact um, right uh, customers okay uh, without that uh, allocating your market um, uh, budget for uh, expensive events like trade fairs uh, is uh, really uh, you know not going to work out in the long run and the reason is because there's a lot of competition in a trade fair it's expensive and it is limited uh, it's available in limited time of the year and uh, it is not on demand that is uh, it is not available when the buyer wants to buy okay so uh, these are the limitations and mm, it all points out that you need to allocate um, budget to your um, uh, to your um, marketing efforts okay and when you're doing that there are two uh, steps to it the first step is to um, allocate um, some portion of our marketing budget for experiments okay wherein you do a broad search and uh, among a whole possible set of combinations and then as you um, get more uh, interaction with the customers you narrow down and then you focus your uh, marketing budget on a narrow set of customers and a narrow set of countries okay uh, keeping again uh, this demand in mind new eco incorporation offers uh, marketing services to different countries uh, both on subscription and as well as on commission basis now once you have done with all your fair marketing uh, research and stuff like that at the end of the process you should um, identify a niche market okay coming um, arriving at this niche market position involves following up on the leads that you get from different um, uh, customers during your um, experimental phase of uh, marketing and then interacting with them even when you know that the uh, transaction is not going to happen okay in the time frame you're doing your research and, but um, uh, you should interact with the customers and then uh, at the end of the and uh, this phase of the market research phase you should be able uh, to identify a marketing position for your products such that you capture uh, that you're in a position to capture a high market share of a small market size uh, market instead of uh, trying to capture a small uh, market share of a very big market size okay so that uh, positioning is very key uh, for your success before you take the next uh, further steps in case you are unable to arrive at this position because of various constraints uh, then what you can potentially do is to is to um, compete uh, temporarily on price okay and the way to do that is to uh, develop economies of scale and uh, uh, which in turn can be um, uh, developed by um, m m getting orders from multiple countries okay and uh, uh, which I elaborated earlier in, um, uh, in the earlier slides and then after um, uh, you position yourself financially to uh, to and uh, and also uh, all the other parameters intellectual property and stuff like that to offer this niche um, market uh, products uh, then you can um, uh, you can develop a plan to offer um, uh, offer value added and brand, branded products slowly over time the next important uh, point uh, in achieving this um, and executing international trade is the importance of using software okay um, as mentioned earlier uh, your digital um, profile and online marketing in multiple languages are key uh, using something like email or phone calls uh, are not good enough tools for international marketing okay and even um, when you're doing the um, uh, analysis of your uh, marketing you need to use some uh, uh, analytical software uh, to do the anal help you do the analysis and uh, not do it manually okay and uh, also while following up on the leads that you get from your marketing efforts you need to uh, use some software like um, a CRM and yeah, that it ha has at least some basic functionality preferably some premium features okay uh, because uh, there are too many customers and uh, there are other barriers like uh, language automation and uh, which all require amplification of your effort and uh, um, effective use of your limited resources 
Okay, uh, keeping this in mind, New Ipo Incorporation offers a basic version of uh, CRM uh, catering to international trade for free, and then we also offer a, a freemium version uh, with the uh, premium features. Now, uh, before uh, really um, uh, zoom down um, to the exact countries where you're going to export or import from, there are other points that you need to take care of. And some of that is like um, uh, regulatory points like tariffs, non-tariff barriers, certification, sanctions, and etc. Okay, and uh, these are external, and you just need to um, know um, know them before you make a final decision. And the other pa uh, parameters are like um, you need to be ready um, with all the samples because uh, importers will ask for them, and uh, if you are an exporter, you have to supply to them. You need to have a clear policy about how you need to be distributing them, and. And then also, you also need to be uh, ready with your financial statement. You'll be um, uh, you'll be surprised how long it takes to get them ready. Okay, but those uh, play a critical role in uh, your payment terms. So you need to be ready with that. And also, uh, once um, an agreement uh, is signed, contract agreement is signed to go ahead with the transaction, the timeline for delivery is very short. So you need to have other preparations by having uh, earlier communication with um, a good customs clearing agent and also with the shipping uh, company which also helps you in giving a good um, help you in giving a good price quote to the buyer okay uh, neo ipon corporation will help you with some of these steps or if it is not able to help you in some of the steps then we'll give you an introduction to potential uh, third parties who can help you with the steps and then the oh, now uh, if you have done all of this now you are ready to actually execute an international transaction um, the it involves a series of steps okay and you need to be patient and do a lot of planning to execute them uh, but the whole series of steps can be broken down into two categories the first category is about uh, marketing uh, international marketing online marketing um, and then uh, in multiple languages and then actually getting leads from them okay these two steps are um, actually out of the uh, competence of uh, small businesses Okay, it involves lots of software and um, uh, professional knowledge and long, uh, many years of experience developing that. Okay, so it is best um, uh, that you delegate this uh, these two steps of international marketing and lead generation to a third party company like ours, uh, so that they can uh, give you uh, the leads. Okay, now after you get those leads. Then all of the remaining four steps of uh, price codes, transaction terms, contract agreement, and actually execution of the transaction, and those parameters are all within your control. Okay, and you you need to set them uh, carefully so that you have a very high um, uh, leads to a transaction conversion rate. And then I'm going to elaborate on that. Okay, um, the basic um, principle when uh, it, in having a high conversion uh, um, conversion from leads to transactions is to set up your terms so it has to uh, be a win-win situation for both the parties involved okay um, uh, some of the uh, parameters in your control are like payment terms uh, income terms and price for example in payment terms asking some the, uh, the buyer to make a full payment initially before uh, you start executing the transaction uh, the order is not going to result in uh, the transaction going through and the probably most probably the reason why someone would ask for a full payment is because uh, they, they want to reduce the risk if that is the concern then um, go and talk to a trade finance uh, company or an insurance company or use intermediary like our company in order to reduce the risk but do not ask for a full payment it is not going to happen okay just because um, you don't trust the other party similarly the other party will not also trust you okay so this keeps to be uh, kept in mind and similarly uh, in, uh, you know, for example, like payment uh, price terms. Okay, uh, if um, if you're in a, a developed country, it might sound foreign to you that the price is negotiable. Okay, uh, but in an emerging uh, markets, the price is negotiable, and they do it all the time. And so um, the, the tradition carries over to uh, international trade. It's just that uh, it, just because the price is negotiable uh, doesn't mean that you can ask, uh, set an um, uh, unreasonable ask or bid price. It will res it will result in the transaction not ask, uh, happening. Okay. So uh, and similarly with the in quote terms. So in essence, uh, you need to set it up as a win-win situation for both the parties involved. And then 
Uh, finally, when you're uh, trying to execute um, the transaction, uh, there are a lot of friction points, and the friction point arises because uh, of um, uh, many differences uh, between the buyer and the seller, uh, mostly because uh, there are uh, different cultural uh, uh, cultural differences between the parties, or lack of common jurisdiction, or um, lack of trust, and language barriers, etc. Okay, the way to deal with this is to actually have a formal process uh, to um, and to communicate and uh, deal with friction. For example, uh, you know, if you um, hire a testing company to do quality testing um, uh, assurance at each of the different manufacturing processes, uh, each step of the different um, step of the dip, uh, of the manufacturing process, then um, you know misunderstanding and uh, friction points are reduced. Similarly, uh, you know, like well, the uh, 